This talk is going to be on intracranial cysts, and in particular, we'll discuss uh, different non-neoplastic cysts. Arachnoid cyst, epidermoid cyst, colloid cyst, choroid plexus cysts, pineal cyst, Rathke cleft cyst, neuroglial cyst, enlarged prevascular spaces, and cystosarcosis. So here we have flare T2 and post-contrast T1-weighted images. There's a large cyst. ISO intends to CSF on all pulse sequences. Typical appearance of an arachnoid cyst. So the key here, their ISO intends to CSF on all pulse sequences, no enhancement. They typically have a narrow connection to the subarachnoid space, so if you instilled contrast it through a myelogram, uh, they would not fill immediately, but they would fill with contrast over time. Another patient with a arachnoid cyst here in the cerebellopontine angle. And T2, ISO intends to CSF, diffusion, dark, ADC, ISO intends to CSF. Uh, another lesion uh, in the cerebellopontine angle here on the right, uh, dark on T1, bright on T2, looks very similar to the arachnoid cyst that we just saw, except here on the flare, uh, the lesion is, is bright, and on diffusion, it's bright. So instead of an arachnoid cyst, we're dealing with epidermoid cyst. So uh, these can be congenital or acquired, uh, usually congenital. On T1 and T2, the signal is uh, quite similar to CSF, uh, but the key here is on diffusion and flare, these will be bright, uh, no enhancement. Uh, the common locations are cerebellopontine angle cistern, paracellar region, and pineal region. On CT, they can have they can occasionally have calcifications here. Uh, this one uh, involves the uh, bone showing very smooth uh, erosion, indicating a long-standing process here. This is the same lesion on MR. So uh, this one has some bright areas on T1. Uh, most of the time they're uh, dark on T1, but they can have some bright areas. A uh, little bit heterogeneous on T2 and uh, very heterogeneous uh, on the flare. Again, the key is the diffusion weighted images, very bright on diffusion. Uh, on the ADC, uh, they tend to be uh, only uh, ISO to the uh, brain on ADC, but on uh, the regular diffusion weighted, uh, they're extremely bright. Mass here in the anterior third ventricle near the foramina of Monroe. In this case, causing hydrocephalus, you can see a little bit of transependymal edema. Sagittal image, here's the uh, lesion. Coronal, post-contrast, no enhancement. And maybe there's a little bit of enhancement along the rim here, but, uh, but no solid enhancement. And we're dealing with a colloid cyst. So these occur in the anterior third ventricle. They can cause sudden death. They can be higher low density on CT. They can be bright or dark on T1 or bright or dark on T2. So the signal is very variable, depends on the protein content of the cyst. Here's a colloid cyst, bright on T1, bright on T2. Again, always in that characteristic location. This one is High density on CT, bright on T1, dark on T2. Uh, 
sometimes you can uh, get confused. Uh, uh, this patient has a high density uh, lesion in the anterior third ventricle near the foramen of Monroe. Is that a colloid cyst? Uh, you can also have choroid plexus. Uh, uh, in this location that's calcified. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, the thin sections make it easier to, to tell that this is a focal calcification. So this is calcification in the choroid plexus in the roof of the third ventricle uh, can sometimes uh, simulate uh, a small choroid plexus cyst. Cystic lesions in both lateral ventricles with peripheral calcifications, choroid plexus cysts, also called xanthogranuloma. Uh, these uh, choroid plexus cysts have a variable signal. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, they're uh, bright on T2. Uh, on flare, uh, they can be bright or dark. Uh, T1, uh, these uh, tend to be dark on T1. Uh, they do not enhance with contrast. On diffusion, uh, the signal uh, again is variable. Sometimes they're uh, very bright on diffusion. Uh, another patient uh, with bilateral choroid plexus cysts. In this case, uh, they're bright on diffusion weighted images. Uh, Another one where they're bright on flare and bright on diffusion. Uh, these never cause any symptoms, just an incidental finding there. Just leave me alone lesions. Uh, just want to recognize them uh, to confirm that they're not of any clinical significance. Even when they're very big, <clears throat> they do not cause any symptoms. Lesion in the pineal region. Post contrast does not have any solid enhancement either. These are either vessels or maybe linear enhancement along the uh, edge of the lesion, but no solid enhancement. And we're talking about a pineal cyst. So usually these are incidental findings. Uh, they can have thin enhancement in the wall, but no nodular enhancement. It's said that they can cause uh, hydrocephalus, but I've never seen this. Uh, so uh, they can have a little bit of enhancement in the rim, uh, but uh, don't get confused. So you can see enhancement in these cysts on flare images. This is a post-contrast flare. So if you do post-contrast flare, uh, you can see more enhancement to within the cyst because contrast does leak into the fluid of these cysts. Remember, the, the pineal gland does not have a blood-brain barrier. Uh, so contrast can leak into the fluid. And... Uh, uh, generally, it's not enough to make it bright on T1, uh, but uh, requires very little fluid leaking into the cyst to make it bright on flare, post-contrast flare. So sometimes you can see enhancement on post-contrast flare, but uh, generally not on post-contrast T1. Another pineal cyst, characteristic location, no enhancement. On diffusion-weighted images, they, they're fluid, so they diffuse similar to water, a very high ADC. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to confuse a pineal cyst with an enhancing lesion. So sometimes on T1, you can see a lesion that's dark and T2 on bright. Uh, but uh, post-contrast, this lesion enhances with the contrast with nodular enhancement, and this was a pineocytoma. Supercellular mass, bright on flare, bright on T2. Pre and post contrast. Uh, on pre contrast, it's uh, iso intense to the brain, maybe slightly hyper. No enhancement to, with contrast. Involves both the uh, cella and supercellular region here. This is a Rathke cleft cyst. These can be just intracellular or combined intra and supercellular. Uh, 
uh, on T1, uh, half the time they're bright, half the time they're dark. On T2, the majority of them are bright, uh, but uh, occasionally they can be uh, iso or hypointense, again, depending on the protein content in these cysts, and no enhancement with contrast. So another Rathke cleft cyst. And another Rathke cleft cyst. This one is very bright on T1, somewhat of a funny shape to it. Another supercellular mass, bright on T2, bright on flare. Is it a Rathke cleft cyst? Let's see. T1 pre contrast, T1 post contrast. This one has some nodular enhancement in the wall which means that it's not a rathi cleft cyst. This one is a craniopharyngioma. This patient, we have a cystic lesion, very characteristic location. It's iso-intense to CSF on all pulse sequences. It's right between the, the cerebral peduncle here and temporal horn here. This is a choroidal fissure cyst. It's a neuroglial type of a cyst. Uh, these uh, uh, are also asymptomatic uh, lesions. You leave them alone. You want to recognize them uh, because they do not need any, uh, uh, any treatment. Uh, the typical, the characteristic feature again is the location. They're in the choroidal fissure between the cerebral peduncle here and uh, the temporal horn. They don't enhance with contrast and they're iso-intense to CSF. On the sagittals, they have a, also have this characteristic appearance here. Lesion in the basal ganglia, similar to CSF on flare. And on T2, you can also see a few other little dots in the basal ganglia here that are similar signal. These are enlarged prevascular spaces. So uh, these occur in a number of locations. The most common location is the inferior basal ganglia. Uh, they can also occur in the midbrain, deep white matter, subinsular region, and temporal lobe. Uh, this is generally an incidental finding. There may be associated mass effect when they get large. Uh, you want to leave these alone. Another patient with enlarged prevascular spaces. Uh, uh, here they've gotten uh, quite big. Uh, again, the signal is uh, quite similar to CSF, no enhancement. Uh, this is a, a very common location. Uh, uh, near the anterior commissure. Here's the anterior commissure. So at the level of the anterior commissure, that's probably the most common location of these enlarged prevascular spaces. They, uh, they are generally asymptomatic, don't require any treatment. Uh, another patient with uh, enlarged prevascular spaces uh, in the uh, subcortical regions. Uh, this is just to point out uh, this patient has CSF intensity uh, areas within the hippocampi. Uh, these are remnants of the hippocampal sulcus. These are formed uh, just during the infolding of the hippocampi and considered a normal variant. Here's a lesion in the fourth ventricle, cystic lesion with, with a little guy inside of it here, cystic psychosis. So these cysts can be interparenchymal, interventricular, or subarachnoid. Uh, the cyst uh, often contains a mural nodule, uh, which represents the scolex. After the death of the organism, uh, there's an inflammatory reaction uh, and uh, uh, edema, and then uh, in the late stage uh, calcification. Uh, 
Another patient with cystic trichosis uh, with cyst in the subarachnoid space. You can see the little scolex uh, here. After the organism dies, you start to get some enhancement in the wall. Uh, initially, there's no enhancement, but after the organism dies, you do start to get enhancement and some edema. Uh, the fluid in these cysts is uh, usually uh, uh, and shows uh, usually does not show any restricted diffusion. Uh, usually, the, the signal is uh, dark on diffusion weighted images. Uh, diffusion images are sometimes good for showing the scolex, and uh, they. Uh, start to calcify uh, often while the cyst is still present and in the end uh, in the late stage uh, the cyst goes away and it's just calcification. Uh, cystocosis uh, also uh, occasionally you'll see the cysts uh, in the spine as in this case uh, relatively uncommon but occasionally you'll see that. Thanks for your attention.